It happened. The inventory levels dropped below 2022, and new listings were up for a staggering amount this week, all while buyer activity is getting even stronger. There is a lot to talk about. In this video, we're going to go over the single family and condo markets in the state of Massachusetts, and we're also going to do an interest rate update. And there is a lot going on right now, including a major X factor, well, that we're going to talk about. And for that luxury home of the week, we're checking out a single family home in Cambridge. It is a stunning home on a third of an acre in Cambridge. I mean, that's pretty much like a farm, right? Hi, I'm Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent. I've sold more than a thousand homes and I'm one of the state's top agents. If you have any real estate questions, then know I'm here to help. Really quickly, sorry about missing last week's update, but my wife and I, we were blessed to welcome Miss Charlotte into this world. A huge thanks to everyone at Brigham Hospital as there were some complications in the delivery and a somehow even larger thanks for the nurses that work there. You ladies, you guys do God's work. You are all exceptional bunch of people, and we can't thank you enough for all of your care. But now let's talk about real estate because, well, that's why you're here. Quick story. This one was actually happening as my wife was in labor. My clients like to house. They even did a pre-inspection on the house before we put an offer so we could write an offer without a home inspection contingency. So here I am. I'm sending over the offer and what I would consider a really strong offer to the seller while Charlotte was getting ready to take the main stage at 3 o'clock in the morning. But we're $65,000 over asking with a mortgage contingency, but my buyers, they've been fully approved. So basically what that means, the only thing that needs to be done is an appraisal, which we were offering $60,000 in appraisal gap coverage. This was a strong offer, but then we found out it turned into a 26 offer situation. We were one of the top offers, so they came back to us and we got another bite at the apple, came up an additional 20 grand and added a little bit more of that appraisal gap coverage, but in the end, that wasn't enough. But here's the learning lesson. There was a number two, which they really liked, and it never came up in our conversation. By the time we found out on Wednesday that we didn't get the first house and pivoted back to that second house, which had been on the market for over a month, the second house, well, it was gone. If you're a buyer and you are in this market and you like two or maybe three houses, then you should be writing an offer on all of them. Don't wait for an offer deadline because those offer deadlines are literally all over the place. Monday, some are Tuesday, some are Sunday, right? You don't want to wait for your number one that you might end up costing the opportunity for a really close number two. It's a crazy market and this week's numbers, well, they're going to show that it's only getting crazier. And really quick, did you see the May market report? It goes over all of the data in April. If not, then it's definitely worth a watch and I got it linked up here. Now let's jump into the single family market stats. We currently have 3,433 houses on the market in the state of Massachusetts. Inventory grew, so yeah, but not anywhere close to enough to meet demand. And it happened. This week, our inventory levels crossed the levels of 2022. We currently have 156 less homes on the market today than we did the same time last year and are only 82 units off the absolute low, which we saw this week back in 2021. Crazy. Not one person predicted that this would be the market dynamics in this spring market. With the tightening inventory levels, get ready for a surge in pricing. You heard that correctly, a surge in pricing. We had 1,082 houses come on the market this week. Now, that was a lighter number than I would have thought with the four-week rolling average being 1,411 units. But here's what is crazy. The 1,082 units was 39.4% off the same week last year when 1,786 single-family homes came on the market. Nearly 40%. Yes, sales are down, but the real estate market doesn't have a sales problem. We have a severe inventory problem. Speaking of sales, it was another strong week for under agreements. 1,130 homes went under agreement this week, which is a big number considering our four-week rolling average is 982 units. We were 17% off last year's numbers when 1,361 homes went under agreement and would have to go back to the week of August 22nd, 2022 to find a week where we put more houses under agreement than we did last week. Like I said, we don't have a sales problem. Sales, they're being restricted from the low inventory levels. So here is the painful recap. Inventory was down 40% and under agreements were down by 17%. There were 556 homes that closed last week for an average sales price of $789,000 and that median sales price of $618,000. And then that month of inventory, this is how we determine what type of market we're in. Zero to five months is considered a seller's market, but the closer you get to zero, the stronger the seller's market it is. 
This week, months of inventory ticked up ever so slightly to 1.77 months compared to last week's 1.76 months. This continues to indicate that it is a strong seller's market. Real quick, shameless plug. I just wanted to mention that if you are thinking about buying or selling a home, then it would be a true pleasure to help you because, well, like I said earlier, I've got another mouth to feed. Now onto the condo market. We had 2,210 condos on the market as of Monday. Inventory went up week over week, but the 28-day change is only a 2.8% increase in the number of condos currently available to home buyers. And while the inventory gap, it didn't go negative like it did in the single family market, it tightened. There are currently only 89 more condos on the market than this time last year when we were at a record low amount of inventory available to condo home buyers. Now, there were 509 condos that came on the market this week. This was a pullback from the previous week when 584 condos came on the market and lower than that four-week rolling average of 545 units. Our new inventory numbers were 30% off of the same week last year when 727 condos hit the market. We had 489 condos go under agreement this week. This was a down week compared to those last three weeks. But when you look at that four-week rolling average, it was right on target is that number is 487 units. And when compared to the same week last year, there were 545 properties that went under agreement. So that means under agreements were off buying about 10.3%. So inventory down was down by 30% compared to last year's numbers, while pendings were down by 10%. If this keeps up, then it's not going to be long when that condo inventory crosses over to those record low territory levels. Now, there were 270 condos that sold this week for an average sales price of $723,000 and that median sales price of $590,000. And then that months of inventory, it ticked up slightly as well to 2.3 months from last week's 2.27 months. Do you like hearing about what's going on in the Massachusetts real estate market? Then I appreciate you hitting that like button as it makes a huge difference to those YouTube gods. And while subscribing, that one doesn't hurt either. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button. So there is a lot of uncertainty and confusion out there. And that is what's feeding into our interest rate market. Rates are just moving sideways, up and down by small movements. And I really think this is going to continue until, well, we get some economy answers. Now, the first set of answers, which isn't the X factor that I mentioned earlier, is What's the deal with our economy? Lots of layoffs. It's not new news anymore. It's becoming almost a daily happening. But it looks like that it's starting to have an effect on our economy. Credit card data revealed first drop in household spending in two years as upper income wages tumble. So the American consumer, well, they've cracked. And that spells trouble for the economy. And you can kind of see that in the U.S. Sale, retail sales data. I mean, look at Home Depot. They were a COVID darling. They just had their worst revenue miss in the last 20 years, and they blamed lower lumber prices, bad weather, and a faltering consumer. Wait, lower lumber prices? Go ahead and read into that. That means building is down, which means contractors, plumbers, electricians are all feeling the pinch. It's all going to continue to trickle through our economy. The question isn't if a recession is going to happen, it's when it will officially happen, which I have the belief that we're actually already in one. And most importantly, how deep and how long of a recession is it going to be? And remember, the Fed, they have their back against the wall as they're still looking to fight inflation. They can't just open up the floodgates with liquidity and stimulate the economy if they're serious about continuing to tackle our higher inflation. And then that X factor that could make all of this, well, quite frankly, not matter. And for the record, I don't see this happening in the market. Well, it's not pricing it in, so they don't really don't see it happening either. The X factor is the possibility that the U.S. defaults on their debt. And I read an article where 59% of Americans don't believe the debt ceiling should be raised, which just astounded me. Because we're talking a massive depression if that was to happen. In my mind, we don't default. I mean, it's not going to happen. Even if there's a stupid one-month extension, concessions are going to be made. No one will be happy in the end, and we're going to be here dealing with this again in about a year because we can't live within our means, and no one's actually serious about this issue at hand. Again, the defaulting is the X factor that could happen. I just don't see it happening. But it's big enough of an issue, and it's a life-altering event that, well, it just needs to be mentioned. This uncertainty is why you aren't seeing interest rates go down or really any movement in them at all. And by the way, if you are a buyer, then you don't want interest rates to go down. Lower rates, that just means more competition, which is going to lead prices to go up even more. You don't want that. 
we should be learning to love the 6% interest rate and maybe should be begging for an even higher interest rate. And now onto that luxury home of the week, which is a single family home located at 88 Garden Street in Cambridge. Now this is a five bedroom, six full and one half bath home spanning 7,588 square feet that is nestled on 0.32 acres in Cambridge. Now the historic Asa Gray house is a literal piece of history and is listed on the National Register of Historic Places as proof. The front staircases, living room, and its cabinets, dining room, library, and attic trust system are all historically protected in the Preservation Restriction Agreement. Now, even though the house is historic, it's not stuck in time as it's been fully updated with state-of-the-art design, carpentry, and modern amenities that have become standard for luxury living. You will find features throughout which include custom millwork, opulent stonework, and high-end appliances, and a stunning kitchen. Now, the home was remodeled with an emphasis on seamless indoor and outdoor entertaining, which is highlighted by the gorgeous Eden Chef's Kitchen and a massive Brazilian wood deck that is accessed by three sets of glass French doors. There is a large studio with a wet bar, ensuite bath, and it can be used as a first floor guest suite or gym or home office. Upstairs, the master bedroom showcases an expansive custom dressing room that is fully outfitted with custom cabinetry and a spa-like four-piece bath with radiant heat, as well as three additional bed and bath suites. Now, the lower level has a large media room, guest room, and bath. This stunning home is being marketed with an asking price of $10,800,000. Want to talk about your own personal real estate needs? I do the luxury house a little week, well, just for fun. My specialty, and quite frankly, my love is helping the normal guy, not the gal buying that $10 million baller single family Cambridge home. And when it comes to helping people sell, my goal is to provide that same service that the $10 million mansion folks are getting, but for us nine $100,000 plus per year property taxpayers. Every person's home, well, it's their castle, and they deserve to be treated that way. All of my contact information, it's in the description below. You can also visit me at youtuberealestateagent.com. Just fill in uh, your information, your name, and your phone number, and then I'm going to reach out to you, whichever way is easiest and works best for you. I personally love to talk about real estate. So whether you're looking to buy a house in the next 9 or 90 days, then I would love to chat with you and just find out a little bit more about your real estate goals. Questions or comments about any of this market data, then drop me a line in the comment section below. You take the time to watch the video, so I'm going to take the time to answer your questions.